jobs that created when they built that 8,000 square foot second school across the street from the first school. Y'all got to uh, understand that. So I years later, I went on to become one of the uh, a developer. What's going on, man? What's up, bro? How you doing, man? Good, man. Look at you, look at you, look at you. I see y'all here running again. I'm right. supposed to be here, right? Yeah. Hey, look, man. Man, you live now. He's alive. He's alive, man, no doubt. Y'all already know what's going on. Seven nineteen. How many y'all know? Represent, man. Yeah, a lot of more bait. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We got a black man who's actually doing international business in the low-riding world. So if you pay attention, you're going to start seeing low-riders popping up on a lot of flyers, like that event fest coming up, low riders on the front of it. LA Auto Show coming up, low riders on the front of it. Why is that? Because they know that's a billion dollar black organization that created a lot of black bi business owners and millionaires in our community. So they want to take that money. They say, y'all go to college and get a good job, but we gonna turn around and get these trades and learn how to build these cars so that we can go maintain these rappers' fleets. We can go maintain Rick Ross fleet of fleets of cars. 23 Bugatti, they realized that was dangerous. That was dangerous because he's getting too many ideas. He's the thinking to himself. He's correcting problems that they created. I come in and realize Bugatti built this $5 million car, but they didn't do this the right way. So let me design a piece myself and fix it and correct their problem. I do stuff like that, and that's why they don't want us having trades. Does that make sense, family? One little piece, one little bitty piece can end up making you a billionaire, family. Do y'all hear what I just said? But well, when I owned that, I helped to build a billion dollar industry in Los Angeles. And I saw Tesla move in my neighborhood. And when I saw Tesla move in my neighborhood, immediately they started giving all our tow truck drivers tickets. They started to stop giving us paint shop. They stopped giving us permits to have everything that we use to build lower. Does that make sense, y'all? That's how you destabilize an industry. They wanted to push us out because they saw that we didn't rent a lot of those commercial buildings. We actually owned those commercial buildings. So in an effort to get them back, they started dismantling that infrastructure, passing zoning laws, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So we need to manufacture the world. Man, we don't want nothing from y'all anymore. We gonna make it here in America. Then he went back to the rest of the countries and said, we're going to put tariffs on all of y'all. We're going to charge y'all a lot of taxes if you don't make it here. So a lot of us didn't understand. We didn't understand what that meant. What that meant to me as a manufacturer that know that 98% of the things that's manufactured comes from China and around the world. If they're going to make it here, what's the number one thing they need? They need the real estate, family. That meant that they gonna go into the smallest black communities all around the country and start building gigafactories. And when they start doing that, that means the cost of the real estate is gonna skyrocket. How many of y'all feeling that? Yes, sir. But see, the problem was we were supposed to see it coming and got in position. And say, instead of us being pushed out, you gonna buy it from us for real money. Not no $50,000, but how about five million? How about $10 million? You said SpaceX wants to buy my 100 acres? Family, we gotta learn how all that stuff works. And that's what I started teaching because I truly understand how all that stuff works. So I is that most of us didn't understand what was happening. So that's when I started going off of what Marcus Garvey had taught me. I mean, Dr. Anya Palmer taught me. I had to come back into the community and teach what I already knew. Teach the things that I've been learning all my life. Carpenter, um, brother, if drywall, roof, people that hang ceiling fans, 
people that know how to hang TVs on walls that just learned yesterday that started the business is getting hotel, getting contracts with hotels that hang 2,000 TVs. You just learned how to hang TVs on the wall on YouTube yesterday. Brother, if I tune day in the building. Today, and tomorrow you go cut a, a contract with the Black Achievement Fund is in the building. TVs on the wall. That is going on right now, man. They're telling us to go to higher education while they go to is in the building. part of the biggest and strongest state movement in our lifetime. Did y'all hear what I just said? In our lifetime. They are being very funny with it. So we got to start pivoting and put our youth into the trades. Whether you're working on cars, building cars, or working on houses or building houses. But we're not looking for no job, family. We should be starting businesses in these fields. Y'all hear what I just said? When we build a house, family, it'll take, like, say a house. We build a median home price of $600,000 right here in Atlanta. We got $600,000 to go back to the community and bring in a black-owned drywall company, a black-owned painter, a black-owned appraiser, a black-owned everything to build these houses, man. That's how we build communities. And when you're doing that type of stuff, you turn around and say, Okay, they didn't ask me where this mic stand was going to come from. They just asked me, do we have a mic stand, right? So it's up to me to decide. Let me go get a black old mic stand. Let me get a black. I'm going to go buy it from a black company. And if we don't have a black company, we're going to create one. Because how much is it going to cost to create a mic stand, y'all? That's how I looked at the world in low riding in real estate. We don't, what we don't have, we can create because we spend $1.4 trillion, if not more than that. So, getting back to the point, y'all. When Dr. Shaker was coming up with all those different ideas, he told me that we could build houses for So he had to land in North Carolina, and it was my job to go to North Carolina and transfer that hemp into construction material. He told me we can use hemp to manufacture clothes. So my thing was, Dr. Shaker had a lot of recipes, and it was my job to help those vegan recipes get in. Please put your hands together. This, this man is the mayor of the city in the United States that has the highest concentration of black people of any city in the United States. If you would, please put your hands together for my mayor, Mayor Khalid Kamau. Greetings, beautiful black people. Uh, as you're, my name is Khalid. For those of you all who do not know where the city of South Fulton is, you take Cascade all the way down here, 285, right where the Kroger and the Publix are, at the perimeter, that's where the city of South Fulton starts. You go all the way around uh, the perimeter to Old National Highway, outside of 285. I like to tell people where the traffic starts is where the city of South Fulton starts. We call ourselves Atlanta Twin City. We are the same size as Atlanta, nearly 100 square miles, and with a population that is 92% African American. We are the blackest city in America. Don't let this accent fool you. I was born and raised on the net, and when I ran for mayor, this was my slogan. I thought that the blackest city in America should be black on purpose. Period. Which means not just being intentionally black in our demographics, but being black with intention in our policy. And so there are a lot of people I see, uh, my brother John Barron here from New York, representative. Um, there are so many people that are trying to get me out of this office. But as long as I am in this office, I'm going to keep teaching. So we've started a book club. And the first book that we are reading is Post-Traumatic Slave Syndrome by Dr. Joe Dupree. So on August 31st, we are having, we are having town halls. There are, I've had these quarterly town halls. We talk about the politics at the council meetings, but we don't really get to the root of the thing, right? So we are having these quarterly town halls that I'm calling Courageous Conversations. We're going to have a courageous conversation with Dr. Joy DeGru about her book and Dr. Daniel Black from the AUC about his book, Black School Psychology. 
certified school principal. He's the kinsman to the late great Frederick Douglass. Kinsman to Seventh AME Bishop Wade. He is the National Independent Black Political Movement founder. He's the founder of the FBMG Annual African Group Tour. He's the founder of the National Movement to Save Black Men. Founder of the National Independent Black Parents Association. He's the founder of Team Pan Africa. He recently renovated the state of the art premier Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy School for Black Boys. I ask that you all take your feet, take a stand. If I tune the man is here, Honorable Dr. Umar E. Fatunde. Georgia, make some noise one time, black family, Atlanta, Georgia. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, brothers and sisters. Let's get the drummers and men to do their thing. Yes, indeed. It's an honor to be here, standing in solidarity with my UNIA ACL brothers and sisters. Put your hands together for the original Marcus Garvey Movement, the Universal Negro Improvement Association, and African Communities League for making this thing happen, Atlanta Division. If you want to be an electrician, if you want to be a carpenter, if you want to be a roofer or a welder, all you have to do is take the classes, pass the exams, and now you are introduced into the profession. There's no luck when it comes to engaging in an academically based professional career. Let's make sure our children understand that. And for many of you parents, if the child is not dedicated to going to college, don't. All you want to do is end up in student loan debt with a kid who doesn't even have a credential to show anything for it. Stick them in a trade school. Find a trade school in Georgia. Stick them in that electric program. Stick them in that plumbing program. Stick them in those HVAC techs who make more money than surgeons. I know roofers who make more money than engineers. Let's stop feeding college to children who don't want to go to college. Give them trade school. That's Give right. them real estate school. That's Give right. them stock investment school. There are other options besides a four-year institution. Exactly. With that being said, black parents, stop saying that they put my child in special ed. Nobody put your child anywhere. In order for me to special educate a child, you have to sign your name four times. You have to sign permission for the evaluation. And we will have we will have second, third, and fourth grade, black boys. And then we will add a grade up and a grade down every year. So the second year will be first grade through fifth. And the third year will be kindergarten through sixth. And the fourth year will be pre-K through seven. And the fifth year will be daycare through eighth. And that gives us enough time to get the Honorable Frederick Douglass High School building up and running. So please continue to donate so we can keep the mission pushing, brothers and sisters. And once we're completely done with the Wilmington campus, I want to come and build FPMG Atlanta. I want FPMG Buckhead. I want FPMG College Park. FPMG Savannah. FPMG Columbus. FPMG Stone Mountain. Because it's not enough to build two schools in Delaware. We got to systematize it. If you don't systematize it, it's not a solution. 
and our people need solutions. We want FDG Chicago, Detroit, Florida, and we're not going to leave our brothers in the diaspora out. I want FDG Nigeria, FDG Ethiopia, FDG Paris, FDG London, FDG Brazil. Brothers and sisters, if you like to work at the school, send me your resume. FDMG resumes at gmail.com. If you want to volunteer at the school, please send me your resume for that as well. Don't ask yourself whether or not you're a certified teacher. Private school certifications are different from public school. The only question you need to ask yourself, do you have a skill, do you have a talent that black children need to learn in order to make it in this world? Maybe you know how to sew clothes. Maybe you know how to build websites. Maybe you know how to grow food. Maybe you know martial arts training. Maybe you know gun training. If you got a skill that our children can use, brothers and sisters, we would like to write you into the curriculum and into the program at the Frederick Douglass Marcus Garvey Academy. We need teachers, we need secretaries, we need nurses, nurses, we need home and school people, we need security, we need bus drivers, we need grounds persons. We also looking at purchasing a farm right now in Wilmington, Delaware, so we have an FPMG farm because part of our program is agricultural science and, agri and, 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 and agronomical science, brothers and sisters. And if you are an expert at growing food, you've been growing your own crops for a while, send me a text message. Let's have a conversation. Maybe you can come on down and help kickstart the FDMG Farm and Agricultural Center. Brothers and sisters, as I wrap up, I want to give you my phone number in case you need to reach me, take out your phone. Parents, if you ever have issues with your children, call on me. As we close out, as I close out, excuse me, and I'm actually going to celebrate Marcus Garvey. You know, I was at Marcus Garvey's grave the month before last, speaking in Jamaica. And then I had the occasion to visit the grave site of Queen Mother Amy, Jake's Garvey. And then I tried to go and find Mr. Garvey's first wife's grave, Queen Mother Amy Ashley Garvey, and we couldn't find it. And when I traveled across America to find the graves of some of our greatest African ancestors, you can't find them, or the grave is dirty, or the grave is unkept. Brothers and sisters, I need you to understand something. If we do not protect the shrines of our ancestors, our ancestors will not protect our lives. We have to be about the business of taking care of the graves of our greatest men and women. We also have to be about the business of calling on our ancestors, brothers and sisters. We need that invisible army with us. The white man names every building after one of his ancestors. The Chinese names all their projects after one of their ancestors. Black people have to stop being brainwashed and spooked by religion into believing that your ancestors is evil or the devil's work. It is not. Worshiping a white Jesus is the devil's work. Calling on your black ancestors is God's work. And we need to call on those ancestors. Also, if we want to finish the work of the Honorable Marcus Garvey, which is building our own community infrastructure, as Marcus Garvey calls out to each and every one of us from the grave, in order to do that work, we have to heal the mental illnesses in the black community. We have black women walking around who are sexually abused and they never got any healing. We got black boys walking around, grown black men, still struggling from the molestation and paraphilia that they were victimized by as a child. We got black children dealing with abandonment. We got black male, female relationship issues. Black women have conflicts within the sister circle. Black men have ego-based conflicts within our community. Brothers and sisters, no house divided can stand. And we got to heal the ills within the black community before we even think about taking on white supremacy. What good is an army filled with emotionally and psychologically imbalanced people? We got to heal ourselves. We That's got right. to come together, we got to sit down, we got to dialogue, we got to talk. And one of the most powerful things you can say to another African, one of the most powerful things you can say to another African is, I apologize. Learn how to tell another black person that you offended that I apologize. Sometimes that's the only thing that they need to hear in order to heal that rupture. Learn how to say, let's stop carrying grudges. Because guess what? As long as you walk around carrying grudges, you can't receive blessings. Because when you carry your grudge, your teeth is clenched. Your heart is clenched. Your fist is clenched. The ancestors won't feed a hand that's trying to get revenge on what somebody else did to you. You got to free your soul. Free your heart. Your heart got to be as light as a feather as our ancient Kemetic ancestors used to say. 
Black people are not the enemy. I don't care how much a black person gets on your nerve, they are not the enemy. The enemy is white supremacy. So whatever your issue is with another African, bury the hatchet, learn to forgive, and learn to say sorry. i close. The European Jew will never be greater than Israel. That's why he keeps Israel strong. No Chinese will ever be greater than China. That's why they keep China strong. No East Indian will ever be greater than India. That's why they keep India strong. And no African, not American African, Caribbean African, Brazilian African, British African, Australian African, Canadian African, no African will ever rise stronger than the condition of Mother Africa herself. Brothers and sisters, if you're stupid enough to give all the uranium in Africa to the white man, that's your business. If you're foolish enough to give all the gold and diamonds in Africa to the white man, that's your business. If you're silly enough to give the coltan, the gas, the oil, the plutonium, and all the other resources of Africa to the white man, that's your business. But I will never, ever give up Africa so I can be an American. I am an African, brothers and sisters. Yesterday, today, and for all time. Atlanta, I love you. One love. Yeah, it's a good book, man. It's a good book. If you got children. Yeah, if you got children, right. Brother, if I tune in. Brother, if I tune in, it'll be like Black Jesus.